Welcome. My name is Melissa Plunkett and I'm a lead product manager here at MongoDB. Over the last few years, I've worked with HashiCorp and with our own MongoDB teams to bring you the HashiCorp Terraform MongoDB Atlas provider. We invested in building a provider and continue to develop it because we know that infrastructure's code tools, like Terraform, are often a vital part of integrating MongoDB Atlas into your continuous integration and delivery pipelines. With the provider, you can easily and quickly provision, manage, and control standardized clusters in testing, QA, and production environments. Like MongoDB Atlas, HashiCorp Terraform is cloud agnostic, meaning that together, these two tools ensure that you can easily deploy to whichever cloud provider or providers that fits your application needs. We definitely go together well, rather like peanut butter and jelly. In today's demo, I have already set up the following. The Terraform CLI, a MongoDB Atlas account, a MongoDB Atlas organization, and created a MongoDB Atlas programmatic key pair with sufficient privileges for what I'm doing today. We won't cover how to do all these now, but if you like a step-by-step -step guide, we cover all of the Atlas-related requirements in the .live tutorial, Go From Zero to Atlas with the MongoDB CLI. Be sure to check it out. I'll be using an example that's in our GitHub repository called Starter, as it creates everything you need to get started with MongoDB Atlas. The URL is shown here. There are quite a few other examples in the repo that will come in handy as you grow your MongoDB Atlas use, including examples for setting up peering, private link, and encryption at rest with your own key. If you need more help, be sure to check out the documentation for the MongoDB Atlas provider on the Terraform registry at the URL here. And if you need more help getting started with HashiCorp Terraform, check out this site for some great tutorials. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into the Terraform files we'll be using as a part of the starter example. First, note the README file. Be sure to check this out for help when you try this out on your own. Next, there are a few files we need at minimum to tell Terraform and the provider what we're doing, and the first of these is versions.tf, so let's go ahead and take a look. This file tells Terraform that I require the MongoDB Atlas provider, so right there, the source address for my provider, and I can set a provider version constraint. Here I added our latest provider version as example of constraint, and finally, a minimum version of Terraform that's needed. That's all we need to have get to get started there. The next is the provider.tf. So this is where we're gonna set our authentication credentials. Now, you'll notice here that I have the variables for the Atlas programmatic public and private key pair commented out. This is because you can either set these variables in a variables related file like this, or you can set them as environment variables. Since my API key is an important secret, I've set it as environment variables for today. So we've got that all set and ready to go. Both the README and our general documentation will give you details on how to set the key as an environment variable yourself, so be sure to check those out. Our starter example will create four foundational items that we'll need to start on our Atlas journey. That's a project, a cluster, a database user, and a project access list. We'll take a look into each of these files to see how each file, each item is configured. But first, let's look at the variables.tf file to see the input variables we'll need to provide values for. As you can see, we have quite a few strings here we'll need to provide in order for Terraform to be able to create the starter environment. Each has a description to explain what it is and a type to show what kind of value it is. All of these take strings. So we're gonna need that organization ID, a project name, a cluster name, what cloud provider we wanna use, the region of that cloud provider we wanna utilize, the MongoDB version, what we wanna call our database user, a password for that database user, what database that database user will be limited to using, and finally, an IP address that we'll be connecting to our cluster from. So how do we set all these input variables? We do that in a terraform.tfrs file. So let's take a look at the one I created. So here I've already set all of those values, and that way those values can be inputted into the Terraform configuration files I'm about to show you. Remember, be sure not to check files like the tfvars file into GitHub because often they'll include sensitive information that you would not want to leak out of your organization. Now that we have our variables, let's dig into those other Terraform configuration files. The first of which, and probably the simplest, is the project configuration. 
It takes just the desired project name that we set in that variable, the existing org ID, and then we're going to print out the project name as a reminder for when we run a plan or apply. Next, let's go ahead and look at the Atlas cluster configuration. This is quite a few more options. Here, we're going to use the project ID of the project we just created in the Terraform run. We're going to pass in that desired cluster name and MongoDB version. We're going to set that it's a replica set with a block of information about the replica set that we want. We're going to ensure that backup is enabled and also that we have auto scaling enabled. And then we're going to pass in that cloud provider that we want to use. The region is actually set up here for that cloud provider. And then we're going to set, and this is actually set for you in this example, an M10 tier cluster, which is a really good one for development. Finally, we're going to output our connection string. So right here. And we'll need that connection string to connect via a shell or driver to this new cluster. For more information on how to use the connection string, be sure to check out the Atlas documentation online. So now that we've got these first two items, let's go ahead and check out database user. In order to access the cluster, we need to create a user here. So again, we specify our project that we just created. So down here at project ID, along with our desired database user username and database user password. While we are creating a user here with a username and password, we have other options we could use, such as creating a database user that will utilize an X509 certificate instead of a password. We are giving this user a role of read-write, which will allow the user to read and write to a database and or collection. In this case, they can only read and write to the database we specified in the input parameters. Note that this database does not have to exist before creating this user. This makes it really easy to set up users early in the process before you've got everything else. We also show an example of a label here. This is a key value pair you can use to help you track any metadata about your users for your own internal tracking and verification. And then finally, we're going to output that database username as a reminder when we do plan and apply of what we've done. So we've got three. We're down to the final. So let's go ahead and take a look at the IP access list. When one creates a cluster in Atlas, we keep it secure by blocking all access to that cluster by default. So we need an IP address, site or range, or AWS security group for the location that we plan to connect to our cluster from. Here, we're going to add in that IP address that we have in the input variables in the project that we just created, and with a comment to let my colleagues know exactly what this is. Finally, we're going to, again, to just set a reminder for ourselves, output the IP address when we plan and apply. And that's all we need to get started. So let's go ahead and exit out of here. We're going to initialize Terraform. So we'll see here, I've already got my provider there installed. So let's go ahead and run a plan, make sure everything looks good and we'll get four items. Yep, we've got four to add, that's four we just looked at. And what changes we're gonna know in our outputs. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and apply this and give it created. So there we go. We see we're going to have that four, say yes. And we're going to head and start creating along. So we can see we've got our project, we've got our IP access, our cluster is starting to create, everything's going along really smoothly. So let's go ahead and jump over to the Atlas UI and see our apply in action. So if we go over here into projects, We'll see there's my MP Live demo project that I created. And when we click on that, we're going to see that cluster come up and see that it's got kind of a blue dotted bar showing that it's being created, but my database access, so my IP, or excuse me, my database user is already created here for me, so that's already been done. And my network access is already done as well. So we can see basically we're just waiting for that cluster compl to complete that normally takes around seven to 10 minutes. So I actually created one beforehand with Terraform to show you what that final output is going to look like. So we see here's one that's already complete. We added four resources and then we have our outputs. So we have our connection string. So that's what I can use to connect to my cluster. The IP access list entry that I set up my project name, and finally that user. So I'm all ready to go. It's just that simple. So have fun terraforming your own Atlas environments, and thank you so much for watching.